Hey, before we begin this episode, we would like to take a moment to thank Nini Pope and Pope Construction for supporting One Voice Makes a Difference. Because of their faithfulness, we are able to continue to create opportunities for people's stories to be told about how One Voice, God's Voice, truly does make a difference. If you would like to support this ministry as well, you can too! Just go to JanetSwansonMinistries.com and click on Contact. As always, thank you for listening. On to the episode. Hi, this is Janet Swanson, and you're listening to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. Today, I just want to encourage you, inspire you, and give you a reason to keep going. As you're listening to this podcast, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open up your ears to hear Him, open up your eyes to see Him, and open up your heart to know Him. I pray that 2021 will find you flowing in the year of God's favor over your life. I pray that healing will come to your heart speedily, and I pray that this podcast will be a blessing to you. Welcome to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining One Voice Makes a Difference podcast today. I'm so excited that you have joined us today. And gosh, I have such a special guest with me today. He is such a minister of the gospel, but every time I hear this man speak, He has ministered to me, and I'm telling you, not just ministered, but touched me deep down in my soul. His name is Bishop Timothy W. Griffin, and he was called into the ministry from the tender age of seven years old. He is a student of the Word of God and a servant who follows after the heart of God. And Bishop Griffin serves as the senior pastor to St. Paul Sounds of Praise in Newark, New Jersey, And he's a devoted disciple, a shepherd, a prophet, a teacher, a psalmist, a friend, a son, brother, and lover of his wife. He is a humble servant who endeavors to see the kingdom of God established as he seeks to to repair the breach and restore the paths. And that is so powerful. Welcome, Bishop Timothy Griffin to One Voice Podcast. Pastor Janet, it is so awesome to be with you and the One Voice community. It's an honor to be on here today. Well, it's an honor to have you here. And I see that you have written two books. You've written a book called Leaders with Leprosy, which is a comprehensive guide to deliverance for the deliverer, Mm -hmm. and a 31-day devotional called He Restores My Soul. Can you tell us a little bit about these two books and... um, what inspired you to write them? Sure, absolutely. Well, you know, uh, we're living in a time, as you can see, obviously, that um, ministerial and leadership failure mm-hmm. is at an all-time high. Mm-hmm. Um, people in high positions, um, and so many people are disappointed when they see leaders fall. Right. I think this book is a, an attempt to reconcile the humanity of the leader so mm-hmm. that people understand that leaders are humans as well. Right. But it's also written to hold leaders accountable. Mm. That we don't get excuses because of our positions, our mm. power, or our titles to just live however we want to live without suffering the consequences right. and without being responsible for the people that we injure in the process. Wow. And more than that, it's about how fallen leaders can be restored. Oh, praise God. Um, Our church suffered a great devastation that I grew up in when one of our leaders went through a very difficult season, and Mm -hmm. it caused the church. I myself was personally impacted by that. I was hurt when when Mm -hmm. this happened with our pastor at the time, Mm -hmm. and whom we still love to this day. Um, And so those kind of experiences became a part of my passion Mm. to write, to find hope for the fallen, Mm -hmm. but to also reconcile that person back to the community of the faith and to do so in a way that still holds people accountable for their bad choices. So I love the book because it talks about Naaman. I'm sure you're familiar with Naaman, the story of Naaman. Oh, yeah. And Naaman was a captain of the host, and the Bible gives all these wonderful things about him, how he was a man of, man of, of, of valor and mm-hmm. of great strength and mm-hmm. da 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 And then it has a conjunction, but, but. <laughs> he was a leper. Wow. And so I was thinking because, you know, in that time, lepers, <laughs> most of them were ostracized yeah. and exiled from their communities. They mm-hmm. were 
most of them put in Lodabar. Right. So how is Naaman, who is a leper, able to be amongst normal civilization? How can he be the captain of the host of Syria? You know, even those in those days, the lepers, they had to announce that they yeah. were unclean. Right. So how can you have public office mm. and not, not be exposed? Well, that's because Naaman being a captain, it required him wearing a uniform in public wow. that covered on him Ooh. what was exposed in others. Wow. So his position gave him access to a uniform that covered him while others were left uncovered because they didn't have the same position. Wow. But when he would go home, his servant in the house, he would take off that uniform and she would say, hey, you look real good out there, but your condition is getting worse. Wow. And she told him about a prophet mm -hmm. who could help him get rid of this condition. Mm -hmm. And so I think leaders need leaders yeah leaders need someone who can help them heal from mm. the broken places the fallen places mm. um, and be restored and so that's the heart of leaders with leprosy it's about i love that yeah. because so many times i think even the church has done this if mm -hmm. you fail i'm going to write you off i'm going to write you off i'm just going to write you off yes yes but yes. god doesn't write us he doesn't off. write us write us off and it frustrates me because, yeah. you know, as leaders and pastors, I've seen pastors cover people countless times, their yeah. children, their grandchildren, their babies, when they fall, when they sin, when even the adults yeah. sin, they uh -huh. cover them. Right. But if that leader falls, Ooh. they're written off. Yeah. There's grace for the people, yeah. but not grace for the leader. And wow. I think that we need to remember that the same grace that the pastor preaches, mm -hmm. he's a recipient of that same grace. Oh my gosh. And so that book is a reconciliation. And I'll be honest, we actually edited that book because when I first wrote the book, it was from a more legalistic perspective. Mm. And God had to rip the religious lens through which I had written that book. Mm. Um, so it was delayed in uh, several years before we actually could get it to completion. Mm. Um, and the book had been completed 10 years before that, but mm. God wanted to strip the religious part. He wanted the reconciliation piece to mm. be embedded in that book because there needs to be grace for the fallen those who are leaders. Amen. Yeah, so. I think you've said something very significant. I want to mm -hmm. just dwell on that just sure. for a second. Absolutely. You said he had to strip the... The religious lens, the legalistic <laughs> lens. Yeah. Because so many people can't say that. Yeah, yeah. So many yeah. ministers can't say, oh, no, I'm not religious oh, or I'm not legalistic. Yes. So what happened? What what um, what gave you a new lens to that said, oh, I used to be legalistic and mm -hmm. now I'm great. So what, what happened on that timeline I, there i think it's uh, first you know to, to to make sure that my, my my stance is clear you know that that legalism comes from self-righteousness yeah you know legalism does. comes from self-righteousness and self-righteousness is an offense to god because we're only ra righteous by grace Ooh, through faith yes so um god had to show me me it's easy to see the the beam the, you know the mm -hmm. beam and others but not the you know the splinter and others but not the beam in your, in your own, in your own. Mm -hmm. and so god had to show me me and you know just because you sin differently mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you don't sin you may not do what they're doing, but mm -hmm. you have your areas that require accountability, that yeah. require you to mature and to grow and to develop. Mm -hmm. And I see all of those areas the same. So God dealt with me about that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that he wanted me to become a breach, a repairer of that breach mm -hmm. for those people. They Praise shouldn't God. be ostracized from the faith. Galatians 6 and 1 says, ye which are spiritual, mm -hmm. restore the fallen. Amen. Restore the broken. Ooh, that word in yes. the Greek means to put them back in their appropriate place. Ooh. So that means that when we restore people, we don't write them off. No. You say, oh, well, you There's just can't do this anymore. Them. Yeah. We, you, can, you can bring them back yeah. through love, through patience, through discipleship, through correction and instruction. Yes, that's mm -hmm. a part of it. We don't want to become this complacent group of people who say, oh, whatever you're doing is okay. It's all right because God loves you and he's merciful and he's gracious. And mm -hmm. yeah, no, we don't want to become that. But at the same time, we don't want to build this divide between them and a God mm -hmm. who loves them so much that he gave his only begotten son for them. Mm -hmm. So we have to be so careful yeah. um, not to do that. And so God had to take me through that process. He allowed that to happen through several ways, through my own life, going through certain storms, through watching others go through the closer it got to me. Mm -hmm. um, he allowed me to see 
even my religious biases, how I was mm. merciful to some, but not to others. Wow. And the hypocrisy in that, mm-hmm. that you're so hard on this person, but yet this person who was close to you made the same mistake and mm. you were merciful and gracious. Mm. And he allowed through those situations to strip that religious lens, that legalistic mm. lens, and to see all people the way yeah. he sees them. That's so, beautiful because yeah. the more you walk with God and you have this relationship with him mm-hmm. and you're really talking to him and you're really leaning your ear, especially because you have a, a prophetic mantle upon yes, your life. So absolutely. when you have that prophetic mantle, you're leaning in yes. to the voice of God and hearing him mm-hmm. and you allowed him to discipline you. Yes. And I, he has done the same thing to me too, yes. where, hey, no, this is legalistic mm-hmm. and I want to get you back here because when you get in this place, that's when people can really be restored. Absolutely. And it's so easy for people to write people off. Yes. And I think of David. Mm. He had every reason every for reason. people to write him yes, off, yes. you know. But God says, I'm not writing you I'm off. I'm going to use all that mess. Yes, yes, yes. And then he wrote the psalm that we mm-hmm. are singing and we're speaking and we're preaching. Yes. So you wrote a devotional about that, right? Yes. He restores my soul. Yes, he restores a my soul. A 31-day devotional. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and again, another one of those situations, I actually had gone through a, a time of uh, spiritual drought. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally had suffered some major losses. Um, I had gotten a diagnosis from the doctor that I was sterile, that my wife and I would never be able to have children. Wow. Um, and we had a, you know, a part of our ministry is the supernatural mm-hmm. power of God. It's not yeah. any of our own, but, but mm-hmm. God has allowed us to pray for couples who were struggling with mm-hmm. fertility mm-hmm. and um, they've conceived. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of like a bedrock of our yeah. ministry. It embedded people knew that we were, mm-hmm. God used us in that area. Mm-hmm. So for me to have to go through that personally mm-hmm. was astounding. I never saw it coming. I never wow. thought that we would have that challenge. And I definitely didn't think the issue would be with me. I mean, it just, right. we never thought about it at all. No. Um, and so when that happened, it really took me for a loop. Um, and God, uh, had to just kind of take me through. It felt like a death, yeah. uh, the death of a child that we had not even had, yeah. but just the idea that we couldn't, it mm. was devastating. Yeah. Um, going through that and then transitioning, we were in the transition. Our pastor had asked us to pray about moving to uh, New Jersey from Georgia. Mm-hmm. And we felt led after praying and seeking God and we made that transition. But while we were making that transition, my aunt passed, who I was very close with. Mm-hmm. Um, we found out that my grandmother uh, had uh, dementia, mm-hmm. progressive dementia. Um, we were losing her in the sense that she didn't know us as she knew us. Mm-hmm. Um, in the process of that, I had lost several family members back to back. Um, mm. In fact, the day I was installed as pastor, we buried one of my grandmother's sisters. Wow. Um, and then it was a progression. From there, we lost my uncle. We lost my another one of my aunts. Then we buried my wow. grandmother. Then we buried my, wow. my grandmother's daughter. Wow. And then we buried my great aunt. And I was depleted. Mm. I'm, I'll be honest. And then being so far away from home, not being able to be there for my family in the capacity mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I normally would have been, mm-hmm. I was also very discouraged mm. because I felt like God had pulled me away from mm-hmm. my family who I love and respect. And yet I was love, I love where I am and where mm-hmm. God has positioned me, but I just hate that I couldn't be there for them mm-hmm. in that capacity. And I just was just in a drought, mm-hmm. just discouraged, uh, despondent to mm-hmm. some degree, mm-hmm. but still functioning, yeah. still preaching, encouraging mm-hmm. others and going through my own storm as mm-hmm. if I, you know, I wasn't, but mm-hmm. I, I was there mm-hmm. and uh, I'll, I'll never forget. I was just at that point where I was like, I, I cannot do this anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I am frustrated. You know, there were other things as well, but mm-hmm. just see, they all seem to be stacking up. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, I'm, empty. And the Lord spoke to me. He started ministering to me about burnout. Um, Mm. in fact, I'm working on another book that's about that, Mm -hmm. but it was kind of a spinoff from what I was working on with this Mm -hmm, book. mm -hmm. And, and the Lord told me, he said, burnout happens when you prioritize working for me over worshiping me. Wow. And pastor Janet, that radically transformed. I know this, Mm. But the way he said it to me radically reshaped because so often we are so busy working for God because, you know, ministry, Mm -hmm. full time ministry requires it. I mean, you always have something else to do and and Mm -hmm. something. 
working for God is not the same thing as worshiping him. Mm. Although working is an act of worship because it's obedience, mm-hmm. whatever he tells you to do. And a sacrifice. You do that, yeah. It's a sacrifice. But it's not the same. Mm-hmm. Sometimes if you're not careful, you will allow that to co- try to compensate for spending that needed time with him. Mm. Pulling away from your busyness. Pulling yeah. away, but I'm going to minister to this person and I'm going to minister to this family and I'm going to preach this funeral and I'm going to visit the sick and I'm going to the prison and I'm going to the hospital. Mm. I'm traveling internationally to see about foreign missions and international ministry. and wow. I'm busy, 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 busy. But, but that's not the same mm. as that time. And we have have devotionals mm-hmm. that's another thing as i have my regimented devotionals and mm-hmm. i'm so oh no i'm 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 committed to our time you mm-hmm. know what do you mean mm-hmm. it's not the same thing mm-hmm. though it's not the same thing and i think some people think that even their regimens are a supplement no just because you meet with god because that's your regimen doesn't mm-hmm. mean you're spending time with him mm-hmm. literally spending that time with him to hear what he has to say where he can rewrite, redirect that schedule, mm. redirect your day, redirect your goings. Mm. Um, and in though in that place, as he started ministering, coming back to that place, this is what you know to do. Come back to it. Mm. Spending that time with me um, the way that you need to. And I begin to experience restoration. Mm. God began to build me back up. He mm. began to pour back into me, into those places that I didn't even realize I had blocked Mm-hmm. You know, I was shielded mm-hmm. and uh, protective of, and he began to pour into those places. And, and that's kind of where that devotional came from. He restores my soul. Mm-hmm. He, he builds me up as the shepherd does with the sheep. I want to ask you something personal. Sure. Um, I know that a lot of ministers, you know, and husbands, mm-hmm. pastors, they stand behind the pulpit. They have to be the leader for the congregation. They're mm-hmm. the leader for their family and you had even said this I was even leading my family back home Mm -hmm. in Sylvania yes you know leader over many many things Mm -hmm. and and sometimes when you pull away from that and you come to the leader Mm -hmm. of you know the Lord the Lord is my shepherd yes you come to him Mm -hmm. you have to take off all that leader stuff yes yes you know Mm -hmm. um here's my personal question as a leader as a man and just, I have all boys at mm-hmm. home. I was raised with all brothers. Right. I was raised with my daddy. I've wow. been surrounded by men my whole Your life. Your whole life, right. And the one thing that I realized that they all had in common, that it's difficult for them to admit they they are hurting mm. and to admit or just to even cry. Mm-hmm. So how did you how did you get past the 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 point of, I'm going to admit this, that I'm struggling here, that mm-hmm. this hurts me, that I'm infertile. Mm-hmm. Did you cry? I did. Mm. I cried like mm-hmm. I had never cried before. Mm. <laughs> did you find that there was healing in that? There was, but I, I found that my journey to that was unique. Well, I wouldn't say unique. It might have been common because mm. what I did was I was a stone wall in the office. It was mm. my wife and, and our primary care physician was a woman Mm -hmm. at the time and Mm -hmm. so is my wife and our doctor in the office Mm -hmm. they she gave me the diagnosis Mm -hmm. I took it in uh digested it Mm -hmm. you know I was like okay I understand Mm -hmm. and we kind of talked through some potential options for us at that Mm -hmm. moment and then we left Mm -hmm. and I drove home I let my wife go in I told her I had to go to the store that was dishonest Mm -hmm. it was the best that I had Mm -hmm. to give at that time yeah and uh, I ended up going for a drive, mm-hmm. and I cried. Mm-hmm. My first cries were private because I didn't know how to mm-hmm. express that pain in front of my wife right. without l- looking non-masculine. Right. You know, right. I didn't know how to mm-hmm. to to break the way I felt I needed to break, mm-hmm. and without it making me look like mm-hmm. less than a man. Right. Um, right. Which wasn't true for her, but that's how I felt that's, internally. It's, it's I think it's embedded in it men is. for some reason. It is. It is. Yeah. Not not only do we not know how to express it for from an emotional point, yeah. but we don't know how to express it. Language yeah. is what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. We don't even know how to articulate sometimes mm. how we feel because we've, in many cases, not been allowed to. Feel. Mm. We've had to be strong. We have to appear to be the strength and to be the leader and to be the one who is mm. sure 
confident mm-hmm. that no matter what it is, we're going to get through this. And that kind of pressure is too much for anyone. It is it, too you, much. You cannot consistently be put in that position without breaking. And that's why I think a lot of leaders do break. Yes. And that's why I think a lot of leaders fail mm-hmm. because they they don't have spaces where they can truly be vulnerable mm-hmm. and say that I'm hurting and that this that I'm not okay. Right. Because right. in most of the environments, especially for pastors, mm-hmm. I mean, because now you're at when you add the religious piece onto it, when you add the spiritual piece onto mm-hmm. it, you not only have the perspective of how a man should be from a societal point, right? But then you add the spiritual point. Mm-hmm. You're the head. You're the leader. Yeah. And we've got scriptures that say how you should right. be. Right. You know. Uh-huh. So it, it's it's even the more difficult. Mm-hmm. You know because the responsibility that comes with that role, mm-hmm. um, it's uh, it can it can become overwhelming. So I think a lot of men struggle mm-hmm. to navigate through crisis. Mm-hmm. I think they str- struggle having the language to articulate what mm-hmm. they feel mm-hmm. and how to show what they feel. Wow, that mm-hmm. is so powerful. And you yeah. know, I see in the Bible when I look at David's life. Mm-hmm. You know, at one point he's a man of war. Yeah. I mean, he yes. is, I mean, you see his masculinity yes. he is a man of war. You see it. And then two pages down, mm-hmm. he says, Lord, I'm swimming in my tears. Yes, yes, <laughs> My yes. pillow is soaked. Soaked, soaked, soaked. So so yes. I think that there's been a misunderstanding that the enemy mm-hmm. has twisted what it means to be a man yes. and a leader and a godly man. He has. And somehow they're saying you cannot be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You cannot let anybody see your weaknesses. Yeah. You cannot let anybody see you cry. Yeah. But in those moments, David wrote some of the most powerful words. Mm-hmm. He restores my he soul. restores my soul. In yes. the valley. Yes, in the valley. In the, the, the times that I'm crying, yes. you know, the times where I'm depleted. Absolutely. So how did God really come in and do that for you? Like when you were just a season of so much mm-hmm. loss yeah. of crying and tears and you know what was the the pivotal point where mm-hmm. did things begin to shift well you know I, I just want to go back just a moment to to talk about what you just spoke about mm-hmm. uh, in the bible and, and, and man, you know even we talk about men not having the the language to articulate how they feel mm-hmm. i think that's a result of the fall mm-hmm. because when i go back to genesis chapter one and two god is the communicative part excellent. In fact, he created the world Mm -hmm. through communication. Right, right. But we see that same gift passed on to Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam is a communicator. He's naming Mm -hmm. the creatures, what they are, what they will become. And when God made the woman for him, Mm -hmm. he brought her to him. Adam named Mm -hmm. her role. He gave, he shaped, her Mm -hmm. identity was shaped Mm -hmm. by what Adam said. Mm -hmm. So this idea that men aren't communicators or that men can't articulate or express I think it's a result of the fall, mm-hmm. and I think that that's a part of what we need to talk about when it comes to regeneration, mm-hmm. when it talks about reconciliation. Mm-hmm. I think we need to erase the societal perspective Amen. of a male and tap back into what the biblical Ooh, perspective is, yes. because all throughout the scriptures, men are communicators. Yes. And all throughout the scriptures, Jesus wept. Yes, he did. You see what I'm saying? He did. You see men expressing emotion, and that doesn't make them look emasculate mm. you know it doesn't make them look effeminate mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> they are men they're men fully real grown men, men yes. real men yes but they're able to articulate mm-hmm. and to transmit mm-hmm. to to in a way that others understand mm-hmm. hey this is where i am and this is what i'm going through that is so yeah. powerful because i feel like now mm-hmm. There's been an attack upon men like never before. Absolutely. And I think because I'm a mom of, of, of young men and I see my husband and I lived with my dad and I had all brothers and never had sisters. I've just been surrounded by men. Yes. I've been able to see things from a different perspective Absolutely. A, about men and I'm seeing the attack that that is upon them Mm -hmm. and and during the pandemic i think things begin to escalate whatever was already in trouble that we like name and we put that uniform on Mm -hmm. let's cover it up we don't we're soldiers we're Mm -hmm. strong we're going to go out and 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 defeat this you know then the pandemic hit and it Mm -hmm. caused us all to be stripped Mm -hmm. of everything everything where 
Our righteousness was only in him alone. In our him. identity was only, only in, in him, him alone. Yes. And he stripped everything away from, Absolutely. I mean, he revealed the church. He revealed the bones of it. And he yes. took it straight back down to the bones yes. of the church, you know? Yeah. So my, my husband, you know, he went through COVID mm-hmm. and we almost lost him. Yes. And he was one day away from the ventilator. Mm. And there there was a shift. There's mm-hmm. something that took place mm-hmm. in that. And he said, I felt the Holy Spirit when he walked in the room. And he mm-hmm. said, I'm going to help you. Mm. And, and things began to shift in his life. Yes. But you know what? When he came home, I saw him wounded. And mm-hmm. I saw him hurting. And yes. I saw him struggling. Mm-hmm. And then I looked around and I saw my, my oldest son wounded. Yes and struggling and I see my other sons just trying to find their way you're just grasping on everything that you can trying to find your way trying to find what I'm passionate about and just trying to hang on to something you know and and I saw the enemy just coming in and and attacking Mm -hmm. but I'm I'm gonna tell you this because you've you've spoken at our church a couple of times Mm -hmm. and every time you have spoken a revival would break forth. Mm. Like mm. your words would be so prophetic and, mm. and we would we would feel that bear witness. Mm-hmm. But this last time you mm. came to preach, you mm. preached on I am not James. Mm. And I'm gonna tell you, something happened that day mm. in my oldest son and in my husband where they have not been the same ever since. Wow. But not just them. People have been talking about it since the day you left. That wow. there's, you know, there's rarely times you can look back on your life and you can remember what the preacher said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But I think everybody remembered every word you said. Wow. And they were hanging on it. Why? Mm-hmm. Well, number one. You had been through some stuff, mm-hmm. and you spoke from a place of being vulnerable, mm-hmm. and you spoke what God had told you, yes. and it was not your words. They mm-hmm. were words that just came down from heaven. Absolutely. And when that happens, it, it was planted in our hearts. Absolutely. So I want you to share with us a little bit what you have been through with the pandemic, yes. with your church, and mm-hmm. the amount of funerals you've done, Absolutely. the amount of losses. And then when you came down with COVID mm-hmm. and how this message, I am not James, was uh, birthed. Yes, sure. Um, you know, well, I mean, the pandemic has been haywire for all of us. Mm-hmm. It's a global pandemic. All yeah. of us have been affected by it in one way or another. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, you know, to take these personal stories that are emerging from the pandemic, um, there seems to be so much devastation, but there is so much deliverance amidst that devastation Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm hearing so many stories that that have dark shadows over them dark overcast but there is light beyond that darkness that i'm hearing if you listen carefully to what's being communicated for me personally our church like many other churches shut down Mm -hmm. um we had to transition into a virtual Mm -hmm. uh you know predominantly virtual Mm -hmm. at first we didn't even have the worship team and and myself it was just me Mm -hmm. virtually and navigating that that learning curve Mm -hmm. um adapting to those changes that was a part of it and then death 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 we had several significant deaths in our church at the beginning of the pandemic and then uh, one of my friends owns a funeral home there and so many people were dying who uh didn't identify with a uh, church, Mm -hmm. um, didn't have a pastor. And Mm -hmm. so he asked me to, would I be willing to come and serve in the place for, you know, for people who didn't have a church family. Mm -hmm. And for many of those people, I mean, it was crazy because literally their loved one would die at a nursing home or the hospital. Mm -hmm. The hospital would send them a picture and say, Hey, can you confirm that this is your loved one? They would confirm the bodies wow. would be sent to the funeral home. The funeral home would then embalm the body, and then they would, the the funeral home would give me a date to go to the cemetery to commit the body. Wow. There was no funeral. They never saw their loved ones outside of if the funeral home uh-huh. took a picture for them to see. They didn't get to see them in a casket oh, or they didn't sad. have a ceremony. There wasn't even a ceremony during the initial part. Eventually, we got to the point where they could have 10 people come yeah. and then 25 people to come mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then 50 people to come. But that was progressive. Mm-hmm. I did several mm-hmm. graveside 
um, mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. that included me, mm -hmm. the mortician staff mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. be in the cemetery, mm -hmm. the grave diggers, mm -hmm. and a camera so that the family could watch it wow. via video. They couldn't even come into the cemetery. Oh my gosh. Um, and so that was devastating. Yes, it was. Um, you talk about not having closure. Mm -hmm. A lot of people mm -hmm. did not get closure in a traditional sense. Mm -hmm. In fact, for some of our people, we've talk, talked about strategizing now that we're kind of coming back and getting to the swing of things to doing a memorial service for those who actually passed from our church. But I did well over 100 some odd services. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable mm -hmm. you know and for a lot of these people I did not know because remember my friend who um, mm -hmm. owns a funeral home I was coming in as often as he yeah. asked me to come as much as I could until mm -hmm. I got to the point where I was like hey mm -hmm. I, I just can't do this uh, I need a break yeah. from this I'm taking home the griefs of people that I don't yeah, know because don't even know. The, their pain still affects me yeah. for a mother to bury their son for a son to bury his yeah. mother for a, a daughter to bury a father or mm -hmm. whatever the narrative was mm -hmm. it was heartbreaking yeah. to see these people weep and cry and to some scream and holler and almost want to fight because they can't have a funeral mm -hmm. I mean I saw it all I, one of my members uh, passed and um and most of her children were like out of state or mm -hmm. from not able to get around I had to go in to identify her wow and uh, I'll tell you uh, this was at another funeral home mm -hmm. and when they took me in a little small hallway where mm -hmm. her body was on a stretcher mm -hmm. in a body bag and I was able to identify that it was her and the guy opened the door to go into the room, and I literally saw body bags just stacked. Wow. Wow. It was unbelievable. I had never seen anything. I pray God I'd never see anything like that again in my life. Mm. But it was just unbelievable. And they were overwhelmed. They had more bodies than they could store, so they were trying to rush funerals. I, I was told that um, they had an accident at that particular funeral home. This is not my friend's funeral home, but the, that particular funeral home where they had a, a service for people to come and view later on mm -hmm. when they started allowing people to come. Yeah, yeah. And they had the wrong body out because they were just what? Having to do it so much, so much. they just got confused. And wow. I think we all were just going through so, so much. much. And again, mm. I'm still going through my own journey yeah. with this restore restoration yeah. from the grief that I was dealing with, and then this pandemic hits. Which just before that, I was spiraling back up. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. now we usually spiral down, but I was spiraling up. That's right. I was coming out of yeah. it. You know, Thank you, Jesus. and uh, and but this was kind of <laughs> like an emotional <clears throat> setback. You know, mm -hmm. just to, so much death, so much sickness, so much mm. of whatever. And and in that March, February, March, I was sick. The entire month I was out of our church almost that entire time. Mm -hmm. This is before we actually went into a pandemic. Wow. Wow. Um, to which I now believe unapologetically that I had COVID mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because my doctor said it looked like a very aggressive form of the flu. Mm. She said, I, I've not, she said, I've seen quite a few cases coming through. She said, it's the, it looks like the flu, but it's worse than the flu. I don't know what to tell you, except I'm going to give you some Tamiflu and some other prescriptions and mm. go home. And I mean, every symptom that you wow. would have had with COVID, I had it. Yeah. Um, we just, they weren't calling it COVID. This right. was February. Right. Um, but by March, they, they were, were announcing it. states in the case, yeah. you know, cases in mm -hmm. the states. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and they were calling it COVID. So yeah. there it was. And then when we later on saw that the scientists and the doctors mm -hmm. were saying that it, it's probably been in the states since October, late October, November wow. uh, of, of the year before, which would have been 2019. So, you know, without a question, I believe that that's what that's it was. What it was. Um, and so that was that. But then then, you know, this year, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I was here at, at here at, at mm -hmm. your church in yeah. Statesboro, uh -huh. uh, Crossroads, mm -hmm. and we had the service for my cousin on the 24th of mm -hmm. July. Uh, he had passed from COVID, my cousin's husband, mm -hmm. and I actually preached that funeral. Mm -hmm. And um, after that funeral, I went home mm -hmm. to our house in Sylvania, and I was ill. I wasn't feeling well. I, I knew that I wasn't well, but I just chunked it up to a sinus infection because I deal with that mm -hmm. quite a bit. So it's not abnormal for me mm -hmm. to have a mm -hmm. sinus headache or, or mm -hmm. congestion. Mm -hmm. So that's what I just assumed it was. And mm -hmm. then by that Sunday, um, I had planned to come and sneak in on you guys. Mm -hmm. I just did not feel well. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I just could not get it together. And I told my wife, I said, something's off. But, you know, we just, again, said, well, maybe it's just sinus. Took some meds and we traveled back. And by that Monday, I just knew something was off. So when my wife came home, I was like, I'm going to go. I'll, I'll be back in a little bit. I didn't even tell her that I was going to get tested because I didn't want her to worry or panic. Because mm-hmm. we had not done much traveling the entire pandemic right. for that very reason. Yeah. Um, both she and I were paranoid outside mm-hmm. of me going. Even that, she didn't really so much want me to go, but she knew that there was ministry and there was needed. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. she allowed me to minister to mm-hmm. those families during that time. But traveling so much, not not really. And so mm-hmm. I knew that I, I said this would really, I didn't want her to be paranoid or afraid. So I just went and got tested privately. Both of those tests came back negative, but I wasn't feeling well. Mm-hmm. By Tuesday, I had a f- fever. Started at like 99, then it went up to 100, then it went up 101. Mm. Um, by Tuesday night, it was at 102. Wow. And I said, I'm testing negative, but I'm concerned. I'm going to stay home. I didn't go out that week. Mm-hmm. I stayed in the room separated from my wife, mm-hmm. uh, mostly because I just didn't want, mm-hmm. if I did have the virus, I didn't want her to contract it. Right. Plus, my sister um, lives in New York, but she had been over with us because she was tired of being alone. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I didn't want her to c- contract it either. Um, and so by that uh, Wednesday evening, my temp was up 103. Wow. And I did both tests. I did rapid and I did the lab, but the labs had not come back yet. So by Thursday, I got a call from uh, the, the contact, contact tracers, mm-hmm. and they were saying that my lab's result came back positive. Wow. Thankfully, I was in and quarantined mm-hmm. um, just because I wasn't feeling well at all. Right, right. Um, but... But that was the case. And then by that Sunday, I had to be taken to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, I was sick. I could not breathe. I could not breathe at all. I was struggling. Mm -hmm. I was literally on the floor begging God, don't let me die. Wow. Don't let me die. My wife called one of our friends who's a doctor, and they've been in the thick of all of this, and she gave me some instructions. My wife some instructions on what to do to help me breathe immediately Mm -hmm. until we could get to the hospital, and that helped significantly. Um, so in that moment right there mm-hmm. when you were saying I couldn't breathe, yeah. I want to stop there and just pause for a minute. Sure. How many funerals have you preached? It's been, I want to say at this point, I know it's been over 160, 70 funerals between 2020 mm-hmm. to 2021 to this point. And you yes. have buried a lot of family members, too. Some have been family members, yeah. absolutely, yes. So while you're right there, mm-hmm. I can see where the enemy would go, you're next, Mm -hmm. you're next, you're next. Because that's what he kept saying to my husband. Absolutely. After we've seen our family members, not family members, but friends. Yes. We've seen friends die. Yes. The same age. It's a reality. Not not old people. Mm -hmm. They were young. Same age. You know? Yes. And and you're seeing all this going around and the enemy plants this seed. Mm -hmm. Like, you're next. I'm taking you out. I'm taking you out. Yeah. So did you feel like at one point when you were feeling that? Oh, no. I did. I did. Remember, mm-hmm. I contracted this mm-hmm. without knowing. At a funeral. On my way to the funeral or either at the funeral or either right after the funeral, mm-hmm. I contracted COVID. Right. Burying my cousin who died from COVID. Who a is a guy. man of God. Yes. He is a man of, he was a man of God who loved God, who loved his wife, yeah. who loved his family, a yeah. provider. Maurice was a exceptional guy yeah yeah um who really loved god for real a, mm-hmm. a pastor at our mm-hmm. home church uh, one of the the uh, staff pastors yeah at our home church and a, a great man of god mm. so you know i i don't think that i'm so special that mm-hmm. i have to be here because god i have to be here because i'm so important mm-hmm. i don't i realize that well at this point i realize that my life death is not my enemy, Amen. it is a vehicle mm-hmm. from one state of existence to another. And Amen. Paul said, I'm betwixt and between. Mm. I long to be here with you, but even the more to be in the presence of my my Savior. So yes. that's where I am. So I'm not threatened by death, mm-hmm. but I was fearful that it could be to some degree my, yeah. my end. Because yes. if Maurice, who loves God, and so many other people mm-hmm. who are pastors. And, and you know, Pastor, can I say this mm-hmm. um, as a sidebar? We must be so very careful with how we express our victories during this time mm-hmm. for those of us who overcome COVID. Because mm-hmm. I think we're being a, um, 
careless. Mm -hmm. um, I hear people say, oh, I beat COVID because I'm covered in the blood. Or I beat COVID because I'm anointed. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's inconsiderate. Yes. Because how many other believers... Who were covered in the That's blood. Right. How many other believers who had faith mm -hmm. and trusted God to the end, mm -hmm. but still died? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when we express our victories, we're we're careless. We're mm -hmm. not thinking about other people who died. That's the Bible right. says in Hebrews, these died in faith. That's right. Receiving faith. not the promise. Say it. So I think we have to be yes. careful not to express our victories in a way that it communicates. And condemns other people. Exactly. Exactly. Like if you had enough yes. faith or if you were really a man of mm -hmm. God, then... <laughs> then you would have beat COVID. Yeah, you must you have know. sin in yeah, your life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's like the people come, who have sinned? Yeah. Is it his mother and his father? That's and Jesus right. said, no. None. This is so that the glory of God can That's be revealed. Right. And we don't seem to see this, but God's glory can be revealed even in death. In death. Oh, even in death. Thank you. Jesus. And so I, yeah. the Holy Spirit has really been ministering to me mm -hmm. about how I express my victory, mm -hmm. that to express it with joy and to express it with mm -hmm. gratitude and to express it with excitement, mm -hmm. but, but to be careful mm -hmm. not to express it in a way that it makes others hear it as mm -hmm. your loved one died because they didn't have the kind of faith that this guy had. Mm -hmm. That's something we, we have to be so careful about. Um, and so navigating through that, I was fearful. And I, yeah. lit I literally said, God, don't let me die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't let me die. And perhaps not the authoritative stance that <laughs> one would have taken. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody would have said, I shall live and, and not, not die. <laughs> to declare the glory of the yeah, Lord. That's, that's right. not where I was, Pastor Janet. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. I was in that moment mm -hmm. concerned. Yeah. And I said, don't let me die. It was a request. It was a plea. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank mm. you, Jesus, mm. that he heard me and mm. that he answered me. Mm. But I know that it didn't have to. Um, it didn't have to end that way, Pastor. Yeah. It could have gone another way. And I remember um, I had to go to the hospital and, and the doctor that's when we found out I had double pneumonia and viral bacteria in my lungs. Wow. Um, because uh, I being rushed to the hospital. Yeah. I never would have known that. That's mm -hmm. now a part of my mm -hmm. testimony. Yeah. Um, but but that's when we found out. And he wanted to keep me, in fact. But I, I begged him. I said, please, if you can, don't keep me. I said, my cousin dropped her husband off for breathing treatment at the hospital. And we never saw him physically again. We never got to touch him again. Mm -hmm. uh, we only His last moments we spent with him, well, I got to see him via zoom mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but that was the end you know mm -hmm. and i just mentally i was you're comparing your story absolutely with his. yeah that's where i was and so mm -hmm. i was like i cannot stay at this hospital because i do not want something to happen and god forbid they can't reach my wife mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden i need to be on the ventilator and they're going to just throw me nope I cannot stay here. Mm. If I die, let me die. Yeah. <laughs> if I perish, I perish. <laughs> I yeah. perish. I'm, you know, I'm just yes. teasing. But yeah, I, exactly. I was like, I'm I know not what staying you mean. at this hospital. Yeah. And so I, I, I went home once my you know, breathing was stabilized and all that was good. So I, I was able to. He, he said, "Okay, I'll let you go home, but promise me, if anything happens, anything changes, you'll come back." And I said, "I would." But that night, Pastor, is when this message came about. Mm. Um, when I was just thinking, like. Because he told me, he said, hey, you're at the point day eight, day nine. Mm -hmm. um, some people just take a turn for the worse. Yeah. So he said, what's happened to you today could happen some more. Mm -hmm. I want you to be aware of that. So you need to really be cautious and you need to really monitor the mm -hmm. changes. Go by the uh, oximeter, mm -hmm. oximeter or whatever it is. Oximeter, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get it mm -hmm. um, because you need to monitor your breathing rates mm -hmm. and uh, all of that. And so, Pastor, I, I went home that night, and I was kind of paranoid because, yeah. I, you know, he just told me this could get worse. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, man, I could really die here. Mm -hmm. And just that the scripture from Acts 12 came back to me, and it just came alive mm -hmm. in my spirit. You know, when Herod had just gone on a rampage, and he killed James to, just, just to satisfy the Jews mm -hmm. for political reasons. He mm -hmm. used James as a pawn in his scheme. And so he killed James at the mercy of 
satisfying other Jewish people because James was a Christian mm -hmm. who believed in Jesus. And, of course, all those who believed in Jesus were heretics. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. They hated them. And so mm -hmm. they, he killed them to, to kill James to satisfy the Jews. Wow. And the Bible says after he realized how pleased they were about it, he captured Peter and he said, I'm going to kill him too. Right. Uh, but he waited until the Bible says it was a feast of unleavened bread mm -hmm. and he decided to wait until Easter which is what we would know as Passover. Right. And, oh, what a what a powerful thing. They even didn't even know what he was doing. Yeah. But Passover is the season of the application of the blood. Ooh. And when I see the blood, mm -hmm. I'll pass over you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so Peter was captured. He said, I'll wait till after that time. But he had him there. But the Bible says that night, an angel of the Lord came to visit him, untied his chains, escorted him past the guards, through the gates. And I love the verse where it says, and Peter did not know whether or not this thing was real, real or not. He, he didn't he was know. Dreaming. He was like, is this a dream or is this reality? Yeah. It was happening so quickly. Wow. The deliverance was happening so fast. He didn't even know whether this Ooh. thing was really happening from mm. one gate to another to one street to another until he realized he was delivered. And the Bible says the whole time the saints are at one of the homes making prayers and supplications mm. for Peter's deliverance. Now, mind you, they had done the same for James. Right. But in praying for James, James was still executed. Mm -hmm. And so that's an interesting piece to remember because yeah. when, when Peter arrives to the home, he knocks on the door, and, of course, Rhoda answers the door. Well, she sees him, mm -hmm. and she didn't even open the door. Yeah. She runs back and tells him, hey, Peter is here. Peter is here. Uh -huh. And they say, oh, it's not Peter. It's a spirit. It's a ghost. Yeah. It's a ghost. <laughs> you know, and I was like, why would they say that? And I just started looking to the narratives of, mm -hmm. of what. Now, well, there are two things that some scholars argue. One, they say that uh, angelic presence mm -hmm. takes on the form of familiar faces so that people aren't afraid. And so some people uh, say that the Jews in that the, the saints praying believe that an angel appeared in the form of Peter to say to them everything would be all right. Right. That's one perspective. And another perspective is that it was Peter's spirit. Yeah. That he had already been killed mm -hmm. and that their idea was that's just his spirit coming to let us know he's mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. But it was actually Peter. It was actually Peter. But why would they think that, Pastor? Mm -hmm. Why would they think that? Because they had prayed for James and James, James died. died. So I believe even though they were praying, even though they were going through the motions, don't we do that? Mm. Don't we say we believe God, but sometimes we're just going through the motions. We're just spewing out Compare the rhetoric. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think really they believed, hey, we prayed for James and he still died. The same thing is probably going to happen to Peter. But you know what? Mm. We're supposed to pray, so we're just going to pray. Mm. Mm. But there he was knocking at the door. And they didn't even realize it. And they it. didn't even realize it. And that's when it, that's when this message came to me. I am not James. Wow. I am not James. Mm. That just because James died doesn't mean that that has to be the way my narrative ends. That's right. That just because someone else had cancer and they died from cancer doesn't mean that you have to die mm -hmm. from cancer. Um, and just because someone else had COVID and they died from COVID doesn't mean that you have to die from COVID, mm. wherever you are, no matter mm. what you're facing, don't assume that what happened to someone else wow. will automatically happen to you. And that was the inspiration. That's how Holy Spirit ministered it to me. You are not James. Do you feel like you came to the end of yourself there, though? Oh. Like you're at this crossroads where you, you literally say, God, I'm praying your will now. Mm hmm you know, yeah. so I'm open to whatever. Absolutely. If I die, I die. If I live, I live. Mm -hmm. And then he came in and, and poured this message he into did. you at that point. Because I think we all have, mm -hmm. we compare any kind of our stories. Like if, if you have any kind of disease mm -hmm. and then another person tells yes. you about this, like, well, so-and-so had it like this. So mm -hmm. this is probably going to happen to you like that Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yes. That's exactly Whether, what you know, so everybody's story is different. And, it you is. know, we have a son mm -hmm. that has struggled with an infirmity for most of his life. And mm -hmm. we didn't even realize it till he was like 10 or 11 years old wow. that he struggled with autoimmune mm -hmm. disorder, disease, mm -hmm. you know, and eventually was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Mm. Well, at 20 years old, he became very ill, very sick, mm. and he almost died. Mm. And he was dying. The doctors mm. 
had done, he had lost um, down from 155 pounds to 98 pounds. Wow. Wow. He was in the hospital withering away, and there was nothing that anybody could do. Mm-hmm. Medicine, he was not responding mm-hmm. to it. His organs were shutting down, and uh, they were doing grasping for everything to, wow. to be able to save his life. And the mm-hmm. church prayed. Mm-hmm. We kept praying. But I remember two mm-hmm. years before, we buried someone his exact same age mm-hmm. with Crohn's disease. Wow. Where he went in for surgery mm-hmm. for a, a colon, not a colonoscopy, but an ileostomy, mm-hmm. where they were going to do a bag. Right. And um, he died wow. in the process. Wow. And his heart just could not yeah. um, handle yeah. all of it. And he was a young man. Wow. So they were wanting to do that for Rut, Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay. And I can't tell you, I came, I confronted the spirit of death, Mm -hmm. and I kept, I kept feeling in my heart, these people were godly, Mm -hmm. and they lost their son. Yes. And the church prayed for him, Mm -hmm. and they still lost their son. Mm -hmm. So who am I to be any different? Right. Absolutely. That could happen to me. It could. Yes. And I just prayed, Mm -hmm. and I said this, God. Whatever happens, I'm still going to love you. Yes, yes. God, whatever happens, I'm still going to preach the gospel. Absolutely. Whatever happens, I'm still mm-hmm. going to trust you. Yes. I want him, God. Mm-hmm. I don't want to let him go. Right. But I have no control over this anymore. Yes, And yes. I've got to, I got to release this to you. Yes. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit came upon my oldest son and, mm-hmm. And the Lord spoke to me and said, pray again like Elijah Mm -hmm. and go out and look for the cloud. Mm -hmm. Pray one more time. Mm -hmm. I had already prayed. Mm -hmm. I had been fasting. The church had been praying. And I felt like I was crawling up to the altar, you know, just praying one more time. Mm -hmm. And then something began to shift inside of him where faith began to rise. And he took, there was just a turning point. It was Mm -hmm. just a miracle, you know, and God restored him. And it took a while for him to be restored. Mm -hmm. But we came out of that for the recovery of 2000. It took him a whole year to yeah. recover from that going into a pandemic. Absolutely. Wow. And then he catches, he was the first one to catch COVID. Wow. You know, and and then worry, you know, it's like you came, you went from one trial to the next. And then I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm at the end of myself. Absolutely. And when you get to the end of yourself, like I've done everything, God, now I just have to trust you. That's it. Whatever, I don't know what yes. the results are going to be, yes. but whatever it is, yes, I trust you. I trust you. Mm-hmm. And I think the ones that are praying on mm-hmm. the outside, we're so much like that group of people were that with, you know, expecting Peter to come mm-hmm. home. God had answered their prayer. Yes. And they didn't answer the one with James, but mm-hmm. they did with Peter. Mm-hmm. And you're just throwing your hands up going, is this real? Yeah. Is this really happening? Absolutely. So when you came mm-hmm. that Sunday and you spoke that word, yeah. oh my gosh, it was so prophetic because mm-hmm. we had buried so many people with yes. COVID, yes. suicide, and traumatic mm-hmm. deaths Absolutely. that were outside of um, COVID, just weird, strange things and people dying all around us. Yes. And then you spoke that, it ministered to my husband, it ministered to my oldest son, mm-hmm. Because my oldest son went through his own struggles yes. and the enemy was speaking into his mind, like these things are going to happen to you. Absolutely. The same thing that happened to this pastor is going to happen to you mm-hmm. and you're not going to do this and you're not going to be able to make it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the yeah. lies just came the and lies. came and came Absolutely. and came. And then all of a sudden when you spoke that, something began to break. Mm. So I, I, have, I have a question. Sure. Whenever you were laying there and you had double pneumonia, mm-hmm. And the Lord downloaded that. Did you feel something break off you? I did immediately. Now wow. I still dealt with and still do mm-hmm. have, you know, if you talk to people and I'm sure you talk to pastor, mm-hmm. pastor has even, we, we've, we've talked about it. Yeah. You know, post COVID there are days you feel great and mm-hmm. days you feel like, man, am I, am I dealing yeah. with this again? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's crazy. But yeah. for that day, that's the day that my fever broke. Wow. That when I got back home, and I, I'm telling you, when God downloaded that, it's like something leaped into me. Mm-hmm. And my fever broke. It went from consistently being 102, 103, mm-hmm. um, back down to 98.6. And from there, I started feeling breakthroughs. So mm-hmm. I was still weak physically, mm-hmm. still drained, depleted, depleted physically. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I was. And, you know, I, I remember thinking as I was journeying through that, that, once he revealed this to me, that the place the church was in, though 
it reveals one side is that they were religious, perhaps going through the motions just because that's not what they know to do. Mm -hmm. But the other side is that they were vulnerable Mm -hmm. and that's God loves when we're vulnerable, Mm -hmm. a broken and contrite heart. He will not refuse. He's close to those Mm -hmm. who are broken. There's something about vulnerability because when we're vulnerable, we're usually out of options Mm-hmm. which forces us into total trust in him. Mm-hmm. And that's not always bad. Mm-hmm. We hate that, mm-hmm. but that's not bad. I think where the church was and acts in that particular text mm-hmm. is where we are with a lot. Cause we really don't know how things will end mm-hmm. in any given situation mm-hmm. because God is in control. We're yeah. not. Right. And when we're facing impossible situations, mm-hmm. we're reminded of it then more than ever. I was on the floor yeah, yeah. gasping for air. Yeah. I could not breathe for myself or else I would have. Yeah. I had no control over what would happen to me next. Wow. The only thing I had was a petition. Mm. I had faith to believe that God could help me. Mm. And the other conversation I think that we have to have around that as well, because so many people are in a spiritual drought because of this pandemic. Yes, yes. Praying for loved ones who did not make, make it. it. Mm-hmm. For all the victories, there are defeats. Yes. And how do you navigate through that? I think we need to reshape how we see faith. Mm. Because faith isn't, our faith cannot be connected to God granting us our wishes. Mm. Our faith has to be connected to God granting his will. Mm. So that if I don't get what I want from God, it doesn't lead me to not believing in God. Exactly. The three Hebrew boys wow. said, God is able to deliver us from your fiery furnace. Mm-hmm. But if not, that's right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So in other words, he's not God because he delivered them from that fiery furnace. He's God because he's God. That's right. And what I see a lot of people doing is we're playing this thing like, oh, yeah, I know he's God because he healed my body. I know he's God. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, he healed your body, but that's not why he's God. That's right. He's God because <laughs> he's himself. God. Yes. All by himself. <laughs> Absolute. Yeah. You know, and I think we have to reshape that or else mm. what that will create in our culture of faith is People believing that God is only God when they get what they want. He's not a genie in a bottle. Mm -mm. He's not a candle on a birthday cake. He's not a quarter in a wishing well. That's right. He's God. Yeah. The sovereign, immutable, sovereign of the world. Yeah. yeah, Leader, ruler, father, keeper. That's right. He's God. Mm -hmm. And his... Godness, if you will, Mm -hmm. for the lack of a better term, just because that's just the way I want to say it, is not shaped or defined by my failed expectation. Mm. Because even if he doesn't grant me what I want, what he grants will be better than what I want, even if I can't see it in the present. Mm -hmm. That ultimately his will will always be better than my wishes. It's beautiful when what I wish for lines up with his will. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't, what he does will if not in the present makes sense, mm-hmm. it will somehow work together. Mm-hmm. Center Gale for yeah. the good. Yeah. He, it'll, there'll be synergy. Woo, yes. There'll be harmony. Even mm-hmm. if it doesn't, it could look like a ruckus and a train wreck right now. Mm-hmm. But some way, somehow, mm-hmm. the good will emerge. Yeah. The good of this narrative. I was telling my brother earlier when we were talking how Paul said, our light mm-hmm. afflictions. Mm-hmm. They're working for us a far more exceeding Mm -hmm. and eternal Mm -hmm. weight of glory. Mm -hmm. He says it's a light affliction, but it's going to give us something exceeding. Yeah. And it's a temporal test, but it's going to yield for us something eternal. Yeah. So everything that God does, his reason for doing it far exceeds what we see from it. Mm. And so for me, that emerged from the text, you Mm, know? Yeah. Because what we end up seeing is that by the by the time we see we really see the sovereignty of God, mm-hmm. because here Herod is killing up Christians because just because it's making the religious yeah. Jews happy, right, right. And God took offense to that. Yeah, these are my people you're playing with, right, right. And God said, you know what, Herod? The Bible says when Herod talked to the people and and he was talking to them, and the people said he sounds like God, and he gloated in that. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says he gave not glory to God. Mm. And watch what happened. The same Herod who tried to kill Peter, Mm -hmm. God killed him. Wow. The Bible says the worms Worms ate him him alive. Wow. You see, when we trust God, Mm -hmm. and I just want to speak that today Mm -hmm. for those who are listening today, Mm. that you are not James 
and that thing that has come to fight you, mm. God's about to fight it. Ooh, that thing that came to destroy you. God's about to destroy it. We need to speak that over pastors today who mm -hmm. are watching. You know, they're talking about churches that are closing and mm -hmm. and how they're saying even only 30 36% of people will return Ooh, to yeah. corporate worship. I, I think we need to speak over pastors and say, mm -hmm. "Hey, that narrative does not have to be your narrative. Mm -hmm. I will not receive the statistics. I mm -hmm. will not receive what they're saying. Our God is God. Our God is sovereign and I will die in faith mm -hmm. pastor i will die yeah, in faith right. believing god faith is all we have that's right. it is the currency yeah. by which we transact through our relationship with god mm -hmm. without faith it is impossible mm -hmm. to please him the psalmist said i would have fainted yeah i would have yeah. quit if i had not believed to see the goodness of the lord and here's my favorite part while i'm alive Mm, amen. Uh, I'm while gonna I'm see his goodness while I'm alive. In the land of the living. In the yeah. land yes. of the living. In yes. the land of the living. And so that's important. God wants to show us his goodness while we're alive. Mm. Not just in the land flowing with milk and honey. That's right. On Hallelujah Boulevard yes. where the streets are paved with gold yes. and the gates are pearly and Hallelujah. the angels are sick. No, no, no. Mm. He wants to show us his goodness. Right while here. we are in the land of, of the, the living. living. So don't accept someone else's narrative as your narrative. Mm. Don't accept the way someone else's story ended as the way your story will end. Mm. God is sovereign. He raises up one. He brings down another. We don't know why. We move away. We don't want to in any way frame or shape it because one is more spiritual or one is more righteous. No, mm. we move all of those things away. But we accept that in his sovereignty, mm. he can deliver me. Amen. He's able to heal me. Yes. He's able to make a way. Yes. We may have lost over half of our church in this pandemic. He's mm -hmm. able to restore the congregation. Yes. He's able to bring back new souls who are hungry. Who yes. are thirsty. Because half of those people that we had anyway came from other folks' churches. <laughs> That's right. Okay, there's a whole harvest out there that there's doesn't go to anyone's harvest. church That's who right. need a church, who need to know the loving Father who mm. cares so much about them that he gave his only begotten son that they could have eternal life mm. and a personal intimate relationship relationship with him while they're here. Yes. So they need that. And, and so we need to make sure that now more than ever, we don't let the lack of participation or the lack of presence cast a dark cloud over our faith about what the future of the church looks like. This is God's mm. church and he's coming back for his church. Yes. So if he's coming back for his church, whether that church is gathering in synagogues or gathering in the streets, his church will arise. His church will emerge. And Pastor Janet, I looked at the early 1900s when they had the global pandemic then mm -hmm. I think it was the Spanish flu mm -hmm, influenza mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But during that same period is when we saw Azusa Street Revival. All right. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And you know, and look and look at how much we looked at society then during that time nobody was going to church. They couldn't gather. Mm -hmm. Nobody was gathering for worship. So churches lost membership then. Yeah, yeah. Church doors were closed then. Mm -hmm. But look at what happened. By the time we see a break in that, the 1920s revival is still happening. Mm -hmm. People are coming back to churches. Churches are full again. From that period, we start spinning off into hundreds of what we now call mega churches. Wow. Mega churches. Look at through the 20s, the that, 30s, the yes. 40s, the 60s, the 70s, yes. the 80s. Some of your greatest churches yes. emerge post pandemic. Mm. This is not the end of Should the Lord delay his coming? If Jesus does not come back mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yet, mm -hmm. this is not the end of the narrative. Mm. What is will not always be. Yes, there is technology that is here mm -hmm. where people can watch it online. Do people still go to restaurants and eat? Mm hmm. Yeah. Do they still? I mean, they got grocery stores and they have food stoves in their home, but they still go out to eat, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, they can watch church at home, but there are still a group of people who are going to come to worship, and there are others who are coming. Yes. God's church will not be defined by a pandemic. Amen. God's church will be defined by his promise, mm. and his promise still stands. Mm. And when he made that promise, he knew a pandemic was coming. Mm. When he made that promise, he knew that it would be a global pandemic. Mm. When he made that promise, he knew that the economy would be affected. He knew that people would be fearful but his promise still stands and he said upon this rock, rock. I'll build my church mm -hmm. and the gates of hell yeah. shall not prevail against yes. it and that promise is still intact Woo!
Ooh, I will not let this pandemic, mm. I will not let science, I will mm. not let statistics speak Thank louder you, than Jesus. God. I will trust what he has mm. said. You know, while the anointing is on you right mm. now, I want you just to go ahead and pray and speak yes. over our pastors, our mm. teachers, our singers, our musicians, our media, our congregation. Just pray. Pray over them, mm. um, Pastor, if you will, and yes. just prophesy whatever the Lord is just putting in your heart. Let's just go ahead and and uh, take a hold of what the Lord Hallelujah. is saying right now. Glory to God. Well, Father, we are just so Thank grateful. You, but, Jesus. Pastor, I want to say this as we get ready to pray and close. Yes. That this is a significant time. We've just come to, through Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. and we've come through Yom Kippur, and we know that those are Jewish religious holidays and feasts. Um, but they're significant because God still has covenant with those times because yeah. the Jews have not yet come into, some of them have not yet come into the fullness of the faith, That's knowing right. that Jesus, the Messiah has already come. That's right. So those promises associated with, associated with those times and seasons uh -huh. are still intact, which is why I always acknowledge the feast mm. because God still moves during those ancient sacred times mm -hmm. with Israel so that they might come to know Jesus as Lord. Yeah. So those those promises are still intact. They're, for us, they've been fulfilled in Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So we know that. But for those who don't, God still moves in those times and seasons, mm. drawing those to him so that they might come to know the fullness of the gospel. Mm -hmm. So those times are still very important for yes, me. Yes, they and are. we've come to through the, the yes. beginning of the year, but then this week was Yom Kippur. Last week was Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. And as we came to that, that's the day of atonement, the day yes. of at one but yeah. the, some of the rabbis call it the day of reconciliation wow. where God reconciles the accounts and erases the debt. Ooh. He sets it back at yes. one. It's a fresh start. It's the beginning mm. of new chances, new mm. opportunities. And at the beginning of the year, they eat uh, apples dipped in honey and, and challah bread dipped in honey mm. that the, that your year might be fruitful and that your year might be sweet. Those are all prophetic proclamations of their expectation of what God is doing. So we've just come into a new Jew Jewish year. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's our proclamation. This will be a sweet year in the midst of all the bitterness. Jesus, Jesus. And this will be a fruitful year in yes. the midst of all the barrenness. Yes. And this will be a year in the midst of all of life, yes. in the midst of all the death. Yeah. But the other part that I love about that is some, some rabbis call Yom Kippur the, the time of recalculation. Mm. that God recalculates. He settles the debt, settles the score. Now, the other interesting part to that is this year, this Jewish year is also what we call a Shemitah year, which is the seven year Sabbath. Yeah. Every seven years, just like every seven days there's a Sabbath, every uh -huh. seven years there's a Sabbath. Yeah. And all the cycles are set of the feast on the Sabbaths, on the sevens. Yeah. The seven sevens of seven weeks yes. of seven plus one, yeah. which leads to Pentecost from Passover. All the, the, So they're set on the Sabbath and the, the series of sevens. Right. So this is a Shemitah year, which is a seventh year. Wow. The reason why that is powerful is because the seventh year was declared as a year for the land to rest. And God told Israel, if you let the land rest mm. in the seventh year, I will give you three years of harvest for honoring this covenant with me in one year. Wow. Isn't that powerful wow. that God would pack a three year harvest into one year if you honor my Sabbath year by letting the land rest in that time. Debts are also canceled. Mm. Those in debt are those debts are settled. So that's supernatural prophetic promises. Mm. But also, if you look back historically, mm -hmm. if you look at a lot of the major events that happen in the world, they happen around the year of a Smita year. Wow. When you look at the global stock market crash mm -hmm. that happened during a, a Shemitah year cycle. Wow. When you look at the uh, pandemic or the influenza that happened during a Shemitah year cycle. Wow. When you look at September 11th, that happened on a Shemitah year what? cycle. Wow. Seven years later, that's uh, 2008, uh -huh. the housing market crash. Uh -huh. That was a Shemitah year cycle. Wow. We're in a global pandemic that started in 2020. We're in a Shemitah year cycle. So every seven years, something significant happens because it is still God's proclamation. The land should rest. Yeah. Even if we don't adhere to it, that cycle is still in, motion, still in motion and God has a way of getting it done. So while there's great devastation and yes, there's great, but there are also great prophetic promises around that Shemitah year mm -hmm. that debts would be canceled, that finances would be released, that the oppressor would have to let their slaves go and let them glean from the fields in which they harvested and labored. Mm -hmm. Oh my wow. God. 
I feel like so running many, uh, right now. <laughs> so many powerful promises that come from that. And and so we're in that, that cycle right now. Yeah. And so I just want to, as we begin to pray, yes. I want people's faith, I want our faith to rise, yes. to expect the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jesus. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Jesus? He is Jesus. Yes. Our God. Expect him to keep promises mm. that he has made. He has not changed mm. his mind. I pray today yes. for everyone who will listen to this bi- podcast. Yes, I Jesus. pray that your faith has been strengthened as we've had this conversation. Yes. I thank you so much, Father, for Pastor Janet and allowing me to come into this very special sacred space mm. and to share. I thank you for the gift that she is to the body of Christ and I thank you that so many more doors are opening for her than have already opened Mm. because of her faithfulness to you and her willingness to serve. I've watched her serve in every capacity from sweeping and cleaning to working in sound. She's a faithful servant of God who's walking in humility and you will hold withhold no good thing from her. I thank you for that, that your hand, as you said, concerning Nehemiah is graciously upon her life Mm -hmm. that she has favor with you and she has favor with Kings and that you send out letters before her so that whatever she needs to complete the assignment that you've charged her hands to do, Mm -hmm. it is provided. We praise you God Mm -hmm. for the audience listening in on this conversation Mm -hmm. that you would bless families, families who are struggling with the loss of a loved one, that you would help them Mm -hmm. through these difficult, dark times that you would strengthen them to know that you're still sovereign and you're God and you're in control and that you can help and heal and minister to them during their brokenness in times of brokenness and darkness. I thank you even the more for families who've experienced victory. Mm -hmm. I ask that you would continue to strengthen them as well and that the recovery process would be smooth for them and for those who are dealing with even Mm -hmm. permanent challenges that you would help them find strategic ways to navigate new Mm -hmm. ways of living. You're able to do that as well. Father, I thank you for pastors. I thank you for business Mm -hmm. owners and entrepreneurs whose businesses have suffered because of a pandemic, whose churches have suffered because of, of a pandemic. I ask that you would strengthen their faith and encourage them and build them up to let them know that where we are now is Mm. not their end. We declare over their lives as we've declared over our own Mm. that we are not James, that this is not the end of our story. This is not where we end, that you have Mm. a promise, you have a hope and a future for us that you have declared from the beginning and those things which you have spoken, you will make good. You said in Isaiah 55 and 11 that the word that goes forth out of your mouth shall not return to you void, but it shall accomplish that thing that you have said and it will prosper in the thing that you sent it to. So we praise you now Mm. that your people will see the manifestation of every prophetic promise that you have declared. We thank you that we are in this vulnerable season surrendered Mm. to your will and not just demanding our wishes. We submit ourselves as sons and daughters. We're open to your plan. We're open to your purpose. But God, we thank you that we will not allow statistics to speak speak louder than you. Mm. We will not let fear speak louder Amen. than you. Yes. We will not let the naysayers, mm. we will not let the media speak louder than you. We will stand still and see your salvation. Yes, we Jesus. will stand still and observe your hand mm. at work that in the midst of this trying time, mm. even as you went before and with Israel casting light on them in the midst of darkness and darkness on their adversaries, you will cast your light upon us. Yes, Ooh, hallelujah. Jesus, that you. you will illuminate us in times of darkness yes, so yes, that the glorious Jesus. light of Christ would shine bright from the church mm. so that that those in darkness would see their way home, Mm. that they would see their way into the glorious kingdom of Christ. We praise you for making us willing vessels, open and ready to serve, Mm. not self-consumed and not self-righteous, but those who are humbly submitted to your righteousness and therefore working righteous works because of your righteousness Mm. working within. That this would be a time of harvest, a time of salvation, yes. that the backslider would come home yes, and it would yes. be a time of miracles, signs and wonders yes. so that your people could be discipled and see your power demonstrated yes. for your glory alone. Mm. This we pray in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 And amen. Wow. What a powerful word. Amen. I can 
feel the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit, even so right now. And Mm. I'm just so grateful for you. You guys, Mm. everyone that's listening out there, I want you to know that this man is probably one of the most loving pastors, kind, compassionate, and yet has such a strong prophetic mantle Mm. upon his life where you know, he, he speaks things and I see them starting to happen. Mm. You know, you speak them and, but you speak it under the authority Mm. of the power of the Holy spirit, Mm -hmm. but yet you're so humble and so kind. And so I'm so appreciative with that because, you know, I see a lot of people that have a strong call upon their life, but they're walking a little bit in pride there, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. you can't touch them, mm-hmm. you know, you can't be around them. Mm-hmm. You have to, yes. you know, whatever. Yes. But anyway, mm-hmm. I am so grateful for you. And you guys, if you want to contact him, if anybody wanted to contact sure. you, you know, through this podcast mm-hmm. or just um, to purchase your books, sure. where could they do that? They can do it online, wwwtwg 2 the number 2org mm-hmm. And, of course, you can, if for booking, you can go to the website. There's a link there called Booking. Mm-hmm. And there's also an e-store that has some of our latest available products. There, there are T-shirts there. There are mugs, coffee mugs. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're a coffee drinker, I <laughs> there's am. a I He Restores My coffee. Soul yeah. mug. All right. new he Restores My Soul devotional. Mm-hmm. Um, some t-shirts as well um, and then more products are coming mm-hmm. um, that's all there on the website and again the booking link is there as well if you would like to book us for an upcoming conference seminar mm-hmm. uh, revival or whatever yes. uh, the opportunities are there online you can also call at 844-200-TWG2 extension 1 for booking extension 2 for prayer awesome and also that will be in the show notes right below um the podcast. So if you're listening, please subscribe to our podcast and like it, share it, rate it, do all those things because it helps us spread the gospel. But if you read the show notes right below, you'll find all of the the contact information for Bishop Timothy Griffin. Thank you for joining One Voice Makes a Difference. And we're praying that um, Timothy's voice today has made a difference because the voice of God made a difference in his life, and we pray that it makes a difference in your life. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to One Voice Makes a Difference. It is our prayer that through this episode, God has given you a new hope and inspiration to come out of darkness, break the silence, and tell somebody so his light and healing power may begin working in you. If you would like to connect with Janet, visit her website at janetswanson.org. Finally, and most importantly, if you are currently in crisis, please call the 24-7 Crisis Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Don't hesitate. Your voice and your life matters.